Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the CMEC Limited Q1 FY25 conference call. As a reminder, all the participants' line will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero, on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Bala Subramanian from Arihant Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Via Madam. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Arigan Capital, I welcome you to the earnings call of CMAC Limited for Q1 FI25. And we welcome the management of CMAC uh, management in this call. Uh, this session uh, has two sessions. And uh, the first session followed by opening remarks by the management, followed by Q&A session. Now I'm handing over uh, the call to management. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of CMEC, I am delighted to welcome you to our Q5 earning, uh, financial year 25 earning call. I am joined today by my fellow colleagues, Mr. Rakesh Ayri, <coughs> CEO, Mr. Vinay Agarwal, our CFO, and Mr. Sunil Gupta, Vice President, Strategy and Investor Relations. Let me begin with a brief highlight about our industry. The oil and gas industries face significant challenges, including global economic shifts, evolving regulations, and the advent of new technologies. Despite these obstacles, the industry demonstrated remarkable resilience, successfully addressing the rising energy demand of a robust global economy. This was achieved through a dual approach, investing in new and low carbon energy resources, while continuing to utilize the traditional ones. Turning our focus to India, we recognize the vital role the oil and gas sector plays in the country's economic development. With energy demands on the rise and supportive government policies in place, the sector presents compelling investment opportunities. India's energy needs are anticipated to grow at a faster pace compared to many other major economies, underscoring its significant growth potential. CMEC is strategically positioned to leverage this growth. Our core competencies, including delivering essential services such as inspection, maintenance, repairs, and subsidy construction. This expertise is backed by a fleet of specialized vessels and highly skilled crew, including proficient diving teams. These resources ensure that the vital support in achieving efficient operation of exploration and production activities for leading companies such as ONGC, Aramco, and Adnoc, etc. is done. During first quarter, while three vessels have operated practically for the full quarter, achieving 95% utilization, CMAC 3 and Glorious Barge have operated for 103 days due to advent of monsoon during the quarter, which is a regular phenomenon with us. Our DSV swordfish operated for 80 days, completing the contract with the Zamil offshore for Saudi Aramco and is currently under dry dock. With the current fleet strength and robust financial health, we are focused to capture many new business opportunities that will arise due to the buoyant market condition on the back of rising energy demand. Now I would like to hand over the floor to my colleague, Mr. Vinay Agarwal, who will provide a detailed overview of our financial performance. Good afternoon. Thank you, Navinji. I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone participating in today's Q1 f 25 earning call. I would now like to walk you through the consolidated financial performance for the first quarter of f 25 Our revenue for the quarter is flat on a year-on-year -year basis at INR 223 crore compared to INR 224 crore in Q1 f 24 While the revenue has grown by 5% on standalone basis. The decline is on account of sale of our bulk carrier in our Dubai, Dubai subsidiary. The company received a sale consideration of USD 10.5 million and reported a one-time gain on sale of rupees 8.57 crore during the quarter. The revenue for Q1 FY24 Sorry, the revenue for Q1 FY25 is lower by 7% Q1 Q basis. Since during Q1 FY25, monsoon starts around 15th May and certain vessels are mandatorily put on off fire. EBITDA for the quarter increased from INR 61 crore in Q1 FY24 to INR 81 crore in Q1 FY25. 
registering a healthy growth of 33 percent. This has been on account of improved rates of our DSB for fish and sale of unprofitable vessel CMEC Nidhi in our subsidiary. On a standalone basis, Tibeta increased by 44 percent on a year on year basis from INR 60 crores in Q1 FY24 to INR 86 crores in QY FY25. Profit after tax on consolidated basis has registered a growth of 59 percent from INR 25.9 crores in QY in Q1 FY24 to INR 41.2 crores in Q1 FY25, excluding exceptional income of INR 8.7 crores. At the standalone level, profit after tax increased from INR 32 crores in QY in Q1 FY24 to INR 51 crores in Q1 FY25, excluding exceptional income of INR 13 crores in Q1 FY24. You would be happy to know that the company has a strong financial health with a net cash surplus of INR 92 crores after adjusting the borrowings. The ROCE has improved to 13% and ROE to 15% on a consolidated basis. I now request the moderator to take up questions from our investor. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nirvana Laha from Padrinath Holdings. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. I have uh, two or three questions. So the first one is, uh, sir, you have mentioned in previous calls uh, that fuel charges are borne by the chartering firm, so like by ONGC. But when I look at your annual report, about 8.2% of our top line for FI24 was fuel expenses. So how to reconcile this? Okay, so uh, uh, it is a good question and it shows that okay, you have gone through our number quite well. But uh, okay, so the uh, reason for this uh, is that uh, when the vessel is chartered, purely it is on charter, the charter pays the for the fuel charges. But when we are executing an EPC job, so in that EPC job, that fuel, uh, the fuel is on our account. So as you have been uh, aware, that we have been executing an uh, EPC job with LNT for uh, last two seasons. So that's why this fuel cost is uh, coming up on that uh, account and it is for that particular project. Got it. So after monsoon also those ships will go back to the same EPC project, right? Yeah, similar kind of project we are, are, are in pipeline. So as and when something is finalized, definitely that will be conveyed to stock exchange through the proper uh, mechanism. Okay, so this fuel cost will continue at this level? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my next question is that in FI24, the company has paid out 26 crores of advisory fees to a promoter company called MMG Advisors. So if I look at the PAT level, this is about 15% of the FI24 PAT uh, of 121 crores. So why, uh, what, what exactly, what services does MMG Advisors give? And my question is, CMEX with so much experience in this field, why does it need external advisory after so many years of successful operation? Uh, hi, this is Sunil Gupta. So let me tell you, basically our uh, chairman is a non-executive chairman. However, uh, he is instrumental in setting up this business. They have already having a three decade experience in running offshore activities. So basically it is a, a mechanism by which uh, a remuneration is given to the corporate wherein some shared services are uh, on group level, like uh, the group CFO is attached to CF, uh, CMAC, uh, the uh, finance team of uh, corporate is attached to CMAC, corporate uh, HR is also helping CMAC. So there is a shared service concept where there is a pool of uh, uh, employee strength at corporate, which is being supporting uh, each of the businesses, including CMAC. And this kind of management fee was also charged earlier by Technip when Technip was owning CMAX. So this is nothing new in this uh, business. 
sure, sir. Appreciate the answer, but like as a percentage of fat, it seems to be very high. So, fifteen percent is not a small number. So, uh, two requests. One is if the board can look into this and see if any rationalization can be done, because typically you know how the market perceives uh, these kind of uh, you know transactions. So, that is one request. And the um, other is if you can give a breakup from next time onwards in the annual report or in the presentation, like. What are the various cost items? Uh, so thanks, thanks on that. Sure. Thanks. And the third is, yeah, thank you. The third is, um, you have invested 55 crores of equity and 150 crores of loan has been extended to the UK subsidiary. Uh, you talked briefly in the last con call about what you want to do. You want to set up a similar business there, but I want to understand what assets uh, were purchased using this uh, very high amount of equity and loan given, and uh, uh, there, there was a 10 crore interest income recognized in that subsidiary, but even after that, the subsidiary has reported an 18 crore fat loss. So, like, what is there any operations already going on there? Why such a high you know, loss already recognized? Uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, Sunil, so again, basically, uh, a subsidiary in UK has been set up to expand our business horizons in uh, Europe and uh, that part of the region. The company has invested into purchase of a property which is uh, under construction for forming a global office. However, this is our discussion with uh, investors. We are trying to say if we can liquidate portion of that property and only maintain a smaller office and uh, get the money back uh, from that subsidiary. However, we are actively working on engaging with uh, global offshore uh, fleets and businesses to see if we can capture that side of business as well. Okay, so this, this so my logical question was, why did the management or the board not think about a leased office? I mean, why when you're already, uh, you know, challenged for funds when DSV, OSV prices are going up so high and your assets can earn good amount, uh, why was such a decision taken to invest in like building space in, in, in expansion? You are right. So basically, please appreciate, yeah, during this period, Prior to this period, the company had invested almost 500 crores in building the uh, vessel strength. Vessels are something that is not freely available in the market. So even if today I have like 92 crores of cash surplus, after net debt, I cannot just simply go and uh, book a vessel. So we are scouting for vessels and as and when uh, we will have a right appropriate vessel available in the market, we will definitely increase our fleet strength and definitely we are focused to reduce our non-core assets. So can you comment on the 18 crore tax loss, why that happened in the subsidiary? So basically that loss happened because uh, that property was under construction and there was a uh, interest and depreciation charged into that asset. Uh, but the loan is ex uh, extended by us, no? By, by so we had booked interest income here and that subsidiary had shown loss so there was a notional uh, and which was eliminated on a uh, consolidated basis. Okay, I will take it up on, on email if you allow me. Sure, There's one please, more question. Please. More than helpful. So, yeah, so at the, at the subsidiary level, if I look at the difference between your console and standalone figures for Q1, there is still a 1 crore uh, loss at the EBITDA level. So how do you see this uh, uh, going going forward for the rest of the year? Will we turn a profit in the subsidiaries or will we continue to have a loss? So, so basically, uh, we uh, have the endeavor to reduce these losses substantially over this year and next year. And in that spirit only, we had sold this uh, CMAC Nibi, which was incurring huge loss in subsidiary uh, in the previous year. Going forward also, we are determined to cut down on our expenses and rationalize the operations to ensure that uh, on an overall basis, CMAC results profitable growth to its shareholders. Sure, sir. I understand the logic for selling Nidhi. That's why I'm asking. After selling Nidhi, now at a quarterly level, are we going to be profitable? Do you expect to be profitable at the subsidiary level? Uh, in the exit quarter of this year, we will become profitable because uh, some new contracts are being discussed there also and uh, we are hoping that some repricing will happen and the profits will come in from Q4. However, in Q2 and Q3, we'll see a reduction in losses uh, going forward. Sure, and if you allow me one last question. So, sure. NCP Nusantara, which is going to come in in September 2025, uh, is what year was it manufactured and is it a diving support vessel? 
Yeah, uh, this is Navin here. So, Nusantara is a diving support vessel and uh, this is built around 2011. 2011. So, another yeah. 10 years of life, 10-12 uh, years of life is left. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much for answering. Sure. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Before we take the next question, I would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question will be from the line of Pranav from Pioneer World. Please go ahead. Hello? Yes, Pranav, yeah. you, you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just had a couple of questions, sir. One, uh, with our contract with ONDC, are there any changes? Uh, last time there were talks of uh, entering to a repricing agreement with them. <coughs> Pranav, can, Pranav, can you uh, come back again? Because uh, voice was uh, not uh, that much clear. Hello? Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a, uh, there was a talk about repricing our uh, contract agreements with certain vendors. If I could just get some clarity, uh, are we going to reprice our ships? See. Or, uh, See, repricing, repricing of ship will take as and when this contract, existing contract gets over and a uh, new tender comes in, uh, new contract comes in. So, this is an ongoing phenomena and it, uh, it continues uh, like uh, this every year. So, if there is any contract which is going to get renewed this year, definitely there will be some kind of repricing there. So, are we going to renew any contracts this year? There, there, there are talks going on, but nothing is certain. Nothing is certain. And... Total, uh, how many ships have we uh, uh, are under our uh, portfolio as of now? See, there, there, uh, there, uh, there are uh, five DSVs, and uh, uh, there is one accommodation barge, and there is one offshore support vessel. So these are the seven vessels in the CMEC. And then there are two bulk carriers in the overseas subsidies. Hmm. And all of them are, have been leased. And are they leased in India only or are they leased uh, every, all over the world? No, so uh, the vessels which are working in the CMEC are working in uh, Indian waters only, except mm -hmm. one. Uh, the Swordfish which, which was working in uh, Saudi, with Saudi Aramco. And the bulk carrier, as you know, bulk carriers are uh, operating all over the world. All over the world, got it. And are we looking to acquire any new ships? Is there something that is going on? See, this is a kind of ongoing kind of uh, process. We continue to look for the opportunities wherever it is, uh, exists. So if there are some good vessels or good opportunities are available, definitely uh, we are keen to add to the uh, fleet. Okay. And so, uh, any particular type of ship we are trying to take over or uh, depends on the opportunity? This is uh, more to depend on the opportunity. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swati from JS Advisors. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I joined a little late, so I apologize if I ask something that has already been discussed before. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, I would like to know how much CAPEX was uh, deployed for NPP Nusantara and what kind of revenue potential we can expect. See, see this uh, NPP Nusantara, that deal has been inked as of now at around 24 million. So, uh, this we will be doing sometime in uh, October 25 next year. Out of this, 5% uh, has been paid as an advanced deposit. Okay, and, so. yeah, and, and as already told, the vessel has got a good potential uh, due to its age, and this vessel is already working uh, in the Indian waters. All right, sir. Uh, can we quantify the revenue potential in any way? See, uh, revenue potential, as of now, it will be too premature to discuss how much will be the revenue potential. But uh, as I mentioned, it is a diving support vessel. So the revenue will be in line with the vessels like uh, CMEC, Paladin, what we are getting, similar to that. Uh, just to add what Navinji just said, basically the contracts are structured in very different manners. And what we uh, try to gauge is when we do a CAPEX, can we get a five-year payback of the vessel's uh, acquisition cost? In Just to answer your question, in the current case of Nusantara, we are quite confident that this five-year payback will be achieved uh, once the Nusantara is acquired by us. 
got it sir thank you and my next question is re- regarding cmax swordfish which is deploying in august i believe so what is the day charter rate for that no no there is a no uh, rate or uh, this charter has been uh, informed or finalized as of yet so i don't know from where you got this uh, thing that okay it is going to be chartered from august onwards all right sir fine i'll be done with you thank you thank you yeah, yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of chirag shah from white pine investment management private limited please go ahead yeah sir apologies for repeating the question but just uh, carrying on that earlier question of uh, shared services so sir can you explain it in slightly more detail how do you decide what services are to be shared and uh, how is the compensation decided i am not questioning the the intent but more of the nitty gritty of how it has been because there would be a process of approving and why not own and why said services so there would be a thought process which would be going on and you would have been reviewing it regularly also if you can just help us understand why certain services are shared and why not own books and uh, uh, and how are the nitty gritty decided on in terms of how do we charge for that so see the shared services uh, agreement that has happened is basically 4% of the turnover of cmax okay you would appreciate that the company has or 10% of the cash profit whichever is lower you would appreciate that uh, during the last year uh, the company has already uh, done 3x of profits as compared to previous year and this year again we are on a growth path this requires a continuous focus from the promoter and top management of the group and there are regular discussions and meetings between the operating management and the corporate management which ensures that the operations are run seamlessly growth opportunities are uh, discussed targeted and acquired and the uh, business is increased so here uh all type of management consultancy be it on the investments be it on the operations on the hr front legal front all these discussions happen uh, on a uh, monthly and fortnightly basis uh, which i would i'm sure that going forward as you see the progress in cmax profitability would justify uh, uh, this contract in place because why the question because the kind of services the way of paying this indicate there is an executive role involved while you may have termed them as non executive chairman but when we look at some of the other entities across businesses and not just this business uh, this industry such high charges are being paid to an executive uh, promoter or executive director or executive uh, chairman you know so hence while the designation is non executive the charges that are being paid are of an executive nature No, no. I assume so that, that is the reason the question is coming across. Then why this designation of non-executive? That is what I am trying to tell you. It's not alone, Sanjeev Agarwal ji. It's basically group management advisory fee, wherein the legal advice, the financial advice, the investment advices are given by the relevant uh, financial teams of the corporate management, and uh, this is not pertaining to Sanjeev Agarwal's role into the system. because he is not he is not the one who can give legal advices or investment or tech, uh, financial advices so but so sir the broader question is why can't you have this kind of people on our own payroll uh, there has to be some logic some thought process right so please help us understand that so sir that is what i'm trying to tell you this uh, uh, structure was already there when uh, hl offshore had acquired cmac cmac used to give uh this kind of uh, services uh, was rendering this kind of services from its parent technic group so the same arrangement has been continued as of now okay and there is no need to relook or review it fair point uh, no, so it's not is... about relooking what uh, your question is whether uh, there is a reasonable justification so let me tell you uh, after all these things if you see there has been a reasonable growth that has the company has already achieved there is a growth uh, drive which is already in place and you will see that that relevant growth for the interest of the stakeholders will be achieved over next few years which will justify uh, this arrangement in place 
So we are not questioning that. So please don't get us wrong. The point yeah. is, you could have all these activities are on your own payroll, and you may still pay out the same amount. We are not even debating that. Okay. Correct. Uh, Correct. Or even higher. That's fine for growth. Whatever is needed is is acceptable. But the arrangement is what can bring in. You may be you may keep on answering this question to somebody or else every point of time. Yeah. Especially when the size goes up. Correct. Okay, of the organization, this sum will become very big, and this will keep on coming under us. That is the point that we are trying to drive. Sure, sir. Understood. We will we'll see and debate internally on this question, sir. Thank you for raising it. Yeah. The second point is, uh, is if I look at from H2 onwards, our base is going up significantly uh, because of whatever happened in the past in terms of addition as well as the charter rate. So, how should one and Generally, the kind of business we are is a is a seasonal in nature. Also, at times we get very good rates, then we stagnate. So, how should one look at H uh, two and twenty six, H two twenty five and twenty six in general? I understand the macro cyclicalities and risks, but assuming things are status quo, how should one look at it? See the uh, the best way to look at the number you yourself as answer. There is a uh, cyclical nature of the work or seasonality of the work is there due to this uh, monsoon effect, and part of our fleet is uh, deployed in the work which work only during non-monsoon period only. So that's why you will uh, the best way to compare the result or best way to see that how company is progressing or doing is to compare on uh, quarterly basis on year on year basis. Yeah, I was referring to that that only, sir. Why why itself when I look at it, your H two base if I look at From Viva perspective, is going up significantly for a strong show that we did in last second uh, Correct. Uh, half. Correct. Right? So, 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 so on that so way, if, how if, do we look at growth and what will drive the growth? That is the question. So, if we, if we divide the year in uh, two in half years, so H2 will always uh, H1 and H2 uh, will be having differences. So, best way is to compare the result is on quarterly basis. So, Q4 if will if you compare with the Q4 will be the best one, followed by then uh, Q1. Q3 and Q2. This is how that uh, seasonality pans out. Also, yes. just to add what Navin ji said, and just to supplement uh, your question, basically there has been an increase in our fleet deployment plan. There has been an increase in our uh, deployment rates. So definitely you will see a decent upside in H2 and next year also. Okay. So, for example, uh, if we did on an average 90 crores of EBITDA in December and March, uh, okay, last of 24, okay, so December Q3 and Q4, if I combine, we have done broadly 90 crores per quarter EBITDA. On that base, uh, what needs to work for us is better rates and more uh, deployment. So, when we are in Q3 and Q4 of 25, we see a reasonable growth. So, that is what I was referring to as a as a question. Yes, so there will be a reasonable growth vis-a-vis uh, -vis last year, yes. and as we have been communicating in our previous calls also, uh, the management is focused to deliver a 15-20 percent CAGR growth over next many years, and we are currently strongly uh, supported by our balance sheets. So in case there are opportunities like we have uh, tied up for Nusantara acquisition for next year, we would definitely not shy away from adding more. Assets to our balance sheet to ensure that there is a profitable growth going year by year. And would it be right to make an assumption that uh, charter rates, whenever they come up for renewal, uh, you we can assume five to ten percent increase given the current environment? That is a yes, fair way yes. to look at it. Yes, you can uh, consider. This. And sir, it would be helpful uh, if you can indicate. Probabilities of any of them coming up for renewal in H2, whether they get renewed, how we are not even questioning that, but it helps us to make an understanding on how to look at the uh, H2. You have done extremely well, and that is the question. So expectations keep on going up. Sure. So let me tell you. Currently, like our two vessels, uh, C Mac 3 and C Mac Princess, which were on uh, EPC contract, shall. Mm -hmm. Come up for renewal, and we will see as to what exactly timeline. But in Q3, there will be opportunity of repricing. What will be the repricing? That only time will tell once the uh, contracts are sealed. Yes, sir. That 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 is understood. Yeah. Great. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, I would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next follow-up question is from the line of Nirvana Laha from Badrinath Holdings. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for giving another opportunity. Uh, what is the status of the second OSV that we purchased? Okay, can you please repeat the question? Uh, what is the status of the second OSV that we purchased? See, uh, there was an agreement to purchase that second OSV. So, so far, uh, we have been talking to the seller for the delivery of the vessel. There are some issues going on for that uh, vessel to be delivered, which we are trying to sort out. So, as and when anything is uh, finalized, as usual, we will convey to the stock exchanges regarding the delivery of the vessel. Sure. Have we paid out anything already to the proposed seller? So, there, there was an advanced deposit as per the international practice, which was in escrow. Okay. Sure. And uh, you have previously talked about another ship from Hal Offshore uh, moving gradually to CMAG. Uh, apart from Nusantara. So any comments on that? Uh, what kind of timelines or, uh, you know, what is the, uh, is, is that an owned vessel by Hal Offshore or is that a leased vessel? If it is owned, what is the life, etc.? Some more details? No, see, this was the management philosophy that we have been discussing that uh, management promoter want to consolidate all the operation in one entity. So this is the philosophy that we, they want to do that going forward, uh, if we can be uh, uh, putting all this uh, kind of operation in CMAT. So that was a thought, that is a thought process going on and that will be definitely there. So as and when this shifting of vessel takes place to CMAT, definitely it will be conveyed back to uh, changes. And uh, th there is this vessel which is uh, owned by uh, Hell Offshore only. So if this is taken to shift it to uh, CMAT, that will be definitely conveyed. Sure. Which year is it manufactured in first, this other vessel? This is, this, is, this is a new build vessel. New build vessel. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, and sir, apart from Nusantara coming in and maybe in future when uh, Hal takes a decision about moving the second vessel, uh, if I look at your contracts, I can see that uh, Glorious will get renewed sometime in, in the next financial year. Uh, apart from that, uh, everything else, the EPC contracts will get renewed, but everything else seems to be contracted out and therefore there won't be any revenue jump, right? So one OSV will come in, your uh, Glorious will get uh, recontracted, Swordfish will get recontracted and Nusantara and possibly one more vessel will come in. Are these the only revenue triggers available? Yeah, I think as I get in a year we are able to get this many things done, what else we can ask for? Surely we can't get the repricing of all the vessels done in the same year. Sure, sure. No? Got it. No, I just wanted to confirm that these are the yeah. revenue figures. See, see, uh, your understanding is correct. And you, uh, as we have been ca communicating, we are trying to tie in long-term contract as well as short-term contract. So long-term contracts are, uh, we uh, cannot be done like this. So already uh, uh, one or two contracts are long term, so they will be repriced only when at the end of that contracts are there and their duration is already known to everyone. So these are the ones which you have already outlined, these are the ones which are going to get repriced. Sure, okay. Uh, thank you so much. I will write to you on, on the issue that we discussed. Uh, sure. Please help answer those questions. Thank sure. you so much. Sure. And all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunidhi Joshi from GM Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Regarding the debt situation, I noticed that uh, we are currently cash surplus on a net debt basis. So do we plan to maintain this position going forward additionally considering the future outlook for India's oil and gas sector? Could you provide some insight into how you foresee our company's broader future shaping up? Uh, sure, ma'am. So basically, uh, the current cash position is very strong, and we believe that uh, going forward, as we have plans for FI 25, 26, 27, we shall be definitely generating reasonably good cash flows. Already, we have committed some cash uh, capex uh, in FI 25, 26, which is Nusantara. And we would definitely want to look out for similar opportunities to deploy these cash flows. And in case there is additional cash flows, we'll maintain some treasury for some opportunity that may arise out of a sudden because we believe markets are very buoyant and India has a long growth story. 
uh, which uh, with the vision of the prime minister is lot of focus on make in india so lot of focus will be there on uh, internal generation of energy demands and uh, we will help uh, indian energy companies in maintaining the infrastructure with our uh, strength of asset fleet uh, okay Uh, fair enough and uh, can you give us a sense of the order uh, current order book visibility how does the order book compare to the same period last year and what is your expectation for order inflow in the near term ma'am we don't have order books we have uh, confirmed contracts as navin ji mentioned most of the contracts are running and in the previous uh, discussion also the gentleman had fairly answered which are the contracts that are coming up for repricing or renewal in the current year or next year so it's a contract to contract period not order book okay okay fine then and uh, i don't know if this question was taken i was away for a while uh, but uh, can you explain what kind of capex are you planning in the next 2 uh, to 3 years and what is the funding mix for that ma'am uh, as we mentioned one capex uh, for sure which is tied up is acquisition of nusantara for 24 million dollar we have healthy cash positions and we would be looking for acquiring more fleets it all depends on the secondary market uh, based on the which availability is decided and prices are decided but in case there will be availability we will definitely acquire more assets our cash flows give us a confidence that most of it will be funded from internal accruals and in case some debt is taken that will also be repaid in the coming years because of the enhanced revenues and the profitability okay thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you the next question is from the line of kartik bhat who is an individual investor please go ahead yes sir am i audible yes yes Sir, so based on my understanding of the industry, so uh, I think uh, uh, for DNT activities that happen, so up to 100 meters or so, I think the divers are used, and beyond that, uh, there are machines that are uh, being used. So uh, I just wanted to understand how uh, I believe a fair amount of DNT uh, activities will happen from the upstream companies involving going into greater depths, maybe more than 100 meters and so on. so how are uh, technically equipped or uh, you know, is there any technical superiority that we have is with respect to both these uh, angles human element as well as the machine element especially if it were to involve uh, going in greater depth yeah see uh, as far as company is concerned we have the specialized uh, vessels from which uh, diver can go into the water and do the work and uh, similarly we have got the vessels which are uh, capable or which are capable uh, uh, equipped to work for the deeper water so company has got both side of both kind of vessel uh, which can work on these kind of things okay okay and um, how is the revenue contribution likely to be from uh, other customers other than ongc so currently i think uh, majority of the revenue comes from ongc which is good i mean that Uh, but uh, is there any plan or uh, intent to reduce the uh, uh, you know line concentration risk, so to say? So I mean, will ONGC continue to have the same share of uh, contribution in next two to three years also, or will it get revised slightly, maybe? So this is a very dynamic situation. As we uh, informed last time, one of our vessel was deployed in uh, international waters in Saudi Aramco. so we have opportunities coming up on both international waters and domestic waters we will see which are more profitable opportunities and we would like to tap them in that probably we may say uh, some amount of uh, shift may happen from ongc however we do not see any concentration risk because our vessels and our crew and diving teams are experts in the area they have delivered almost more than 3 decades of services to ongc and in case ongc needs our services we'll continue to give it and uh, we don't find any concentration risk okay okay and sir since you mentioned the saudi aramco bit so when we look at uh, maybe inquiries uh, over the market so what are the top two three things that they primarily look at as in you know how do they decide uh, to select one uh, one one company out of maybe three or four uh, comparing maybe seen like with a local company there as well so basically uh, the health of the vessel the experience of the company the financial strength of the company uh, these are the major considerations that are 
taken uh, looked at by any person who uh, take us on hire okay okay got it and uh, sir i was just going to the annual report and there's a mention of uh, diversification into tunnel construction project for uh, high speed rail project at wapi ali so uh, what are your thoughts on this is it a what is the rationale behind it or are we planning to uh, pursue this further as well so we don't see uh, our, we had tried to do some diversification by getting this project but as of now we would like to focus on our core activities which is uh, diving support services and subsea construction where our expertise lies okay sure okay sure thank you the next question for today is from the line of swati from gs advisors please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh, i would like to know what are the current deployment days and the average day rate for the quarter and my second question is regarding uh, the osb industry could you share some details about that and what the future plan is over the next 5 years regards to that ma'am uh, i think that deployment uh, mr navin has already explained for q1 and as he rightly said uh, three of our vessels are on off fire because of monsoon so deployment keeps changing depending on the nature of work and the type of contract and same is the case with regard to the rates in case of a subsea construction contract it is a lump sum job in case of dsvs it can be full service contract with diving support or a bare boat uh, arrangement so talking about uh, such rates uh, here would not justify as an investor what you need to look at is with the healthy mix are we able to improve our bottom line and continue to grow the company which is our endeavor uh, for our investors i hope i am able to clear you yes yeah, sir thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraints that was the last question i now hand over to the management for closing comments we thank all our investors uh, who have bestowed confidence in us we assure that uh, the management uh, is tirelessly working for the profitable growth of the company and for its stakeholders and going forward as well we would continue to achieve uh, decent performances and uh, good growth in the years to come thank you very much thank you on behalf of arihant capital markets limited that concludes this conference Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line. Thank you. Yeah.